In the months I spent trying to 100% The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I often got sidetracked from my quest for completion, as I'm sure many players have, by the scale of the game world. This incarnation of Hyrule is so expansive and so immersive that getting lost in it was half the fun. But when I was sticking to my mission to save Princess Zelda and the gargantuan Kingdom of Hyrule, I found that the cinematic storytelling methods of Breath of the Wild felt a little... suffocated. I've spent a while trying to figure out what exactly it is about Breath of the Wild's cinematic narrative that turns me off. Part of me wanted to do an episode about how the non-linear progression model of the game means that the story suffers from having to be delivered in broad strokes, resulting in less creative choices in cinematography. Another issue I considered was the cutscene's lack of any cohesive visual motifs to give a semblance of connectivity, even when told out of order. For example, character poses. Prince Sidon has a trademark pose, but others don't. Why? Why can't everybody have a unifying gimmick that gives the cutscenes a sense of repeated familiarity? I don't know. I even came close to making a full-blown sequel to my Xenoblade Chronicles show Don't Tell episode based off the number of cutscenes that waste prime opportunities for character growth with lazy offhand dialogue instead of visual storytelling. Be sure to take the time to soothe your mind. That's the only way you'll know how you truly feel. Your advice was quite helpful, thank you. And this little one and I are getting along quite well now. Oh, Link told you that? That's great. Why didn't we see it? And then I found a key culprit responsible for the damage to Breath of the Wild's cinematic narrative, a design choice that backtracks on progress made across several recent Zelda titles and ultimately creates a huge disconnect between the audience and the narrative, a choice that has kept me up at night asking one question. What's wrong with Link's face? The human face is the cornerstone of communication. Facial expressions are the key to reading people, getting a sense of their mood, their temperament, and even their frame of mind. A smartly deployed close-up can sell an audience on feelings such as surprise, determination, or murderous intent. An expression, in short, can often speak louder than words. Since the transition from 2D to 3D, The Legend of Zelda has done a good job of delivering story progression through cutscenes. With each game that followed Ocarina of Time, Nintendo seemed to learn how to find newer and more creative ways to engage the audience while also deploying effective and compelling story beats. Part of that has come down to one factor, the way they kept Link, a silent protagonist, an active participant in the game's narrative by being as expressive as possible. Link's inability to speak has never hindered the storytelling of any 3D Zelda game, because Nintendo has always taken care to animate Link in a way that lets the audience see how he feels about any given moment. His range of expressions were rather simple in Ocarina, but as the games progressed, Link became more and more expressive. By Skyward Sword, Link was gaming's equivalent of Charlie Chaplin's classic character, The Little Tramp, a silent protagonist who could convey an appealing and convincing personality through something as simple as a friendly smile. However, from the beginning of Breath of the Wild, I felt that things seemed different. Link is very much a blank slate, and not just in that he's trying to recover his memories. Whether it's in the amnesia-riddled present or in the game's flashbacks, Link only has three facial expressions in any given scene throughout this game. Stone-faced, surprised, and concerned. Link's ability to express himself has been significantly scaled back, for reasons I think I understand, but which ultimately hurt the visual storytelling of the game, especially in comparison to Link's co-star, Princess Zelda. In recovering Link's stolen memories, Breath of the Wild fleshes out a bond between our hero and Princess Zelda. Their relationship grows from a slightly hostile pairing of co-workers to a partnership fueled by respect and understanding of each other's personal issues. At least, that's what we're told. The memories, as we see and hear them, paint a clear and strong portrait of Princess Zelda as a woman who wants to buck long-held traditions and tackle her responsibilities in new and exciting ways, a not-so-subtle metaphor for the game itself. Her desires are complicated by the presence of Link, because while Zelda struggles to fulfill her traditional roles, Link has already, and apparently very easily, gotten the Master Sword and sealed his title as the Chosen One. Zelda struggles under expectations while being forced to watch Link exceed his. The cutscenes of the game show us this conflict from their very first meeting, with Zelda looking hesitantly at Link, almost disgusted at the sight of him. Later, she's angry at the fact that Link is her appointed bodyguard, then shocked when Link saves her life, bashful in revealing some of her deepest fears to him, and devastated when accepting that her failures led to the deaths of her friends. Zelda is a wide tapestry of emotion, and her character arc is driven by how strongly her face is framed and animated in every crucial moment. Even if the dialogue is clunky, and it often is, I, the person in question, am fine, regardless of the king's orders. We get a true sense of what Zelda desires. Meanwhile, each of these key story moments is complemented by Link looking on with dead, flat stares. He's so unexpressive, he makes playing from Ed Ed and Eddie look like Daniel Day-Lewis in comparison. Gone are the pain glances of Wind Waker Link, the fearful reactions of Twilight Princess Link, or the friendly sincerity of Skyward Sword Link. Breath of the Wild Link sits through moment after moment of key plot development and gives us nothing. Sure, he'll look shocked upon discovering a memory, or 
furrow his brow when something seems fishy. But otherwise, there's no life behind those blue eyes. Recollections of childhood whimsy? Blank stare. Having your integrity challenged by Hyrule's biggest douche? Off-camera reaction. Comforting your friend as they break down in your arms? Blank stare. Hell, he even makes dying look boring. This lack of even the simplest facial expressions cripples the cutscenes, ruining what should be a two-way character piece by preventing one of the participants from being able to emote. Zelda discovers her true potential through her friendship with Link, but Link seems like he's a zombie. How can we buy that he's been this powerful method of emotional support to Zelda if we never see it? Now, part of me assumes that this, like many other choices in developing Breath of the Wild's narrative, comes down to a core trade-off. A bigger, more expansive Hyrule that you can explore however you want means Link has to fit any possible definition of any possible gameplay experience. Link isn't given the chance to be a dynamic, fleshed-out character because the design of Breath of the Wild requires Link to get back to living up to his namesake. Link needs to be a link to the player, a tool that molds the player's whims and desires onto the gameplay so that exploring every nook and cranny of Hyrule feels like a unique, personal experience. When discussing the narrative with Game Informer, Breath of the Wild's own developers referred to the story as optional. Is it possible for players to not see those story moments? Can they just cruise past them? So the cutscenes are like a dungeon that you can stumble into if you'd like. <laughs> Solidifying that the objective of Breath of the Wild was always gameplay over story. This mirrors other recent gameplay over narrative choices enforced by Miyamoto, such as within the Super Mario Galaxy series. As story takes a backseat to gameplay, there will be sacrifices. In a nutshell, a protagonist that must mean anything to any player cannot have any defined individual meaning for himself. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild expands the size and possibilities of its in-game world while scaling back and hindering its in-game narrative. These are just facts we have to face. Instead of building off the natural, earnest bond we see between Link and Zelda and Skyward Sword, we get the deepest Zelda yet written and the dullest Link yet dropped. The desire to let players be their own hero means one of Nintendo's greatest champions becomes a cipher in his own narrative. But given the creator's stated intent, this sacrifice gave players one of the most refreshing Zelda experiences to date. It's a trade-off I'm not entirely satisfied with, but as the Zelda franchise rides a new wave of momentum, maybe one day Nintendo will breathe more life into a future Link.